Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing what it means to be more like Jesus. Many Christians place a lot of stress on becoming more like Jesus, but what exactly does that mean? Curing illnesses? Multiplying loaves and fish? Walking on water? Fortunately, not all of the qualities that Jesus demonstrates in the Gospels are quite as hard to attain as those. Jesus also had many qualities that any person can work towards without any of that. And last time, we discussed the judgment of Jesus. Today, the compassion of Jesus and his service for those in need. And Jesus, going out, saw a great multitude, and he had compassion on them, because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Mark 6.34 Jesus was compassionate to the people who followed him, because he knew the teachers of their time weren't teaching them what they needed to learn. If anything, they were busily using their positions of authority for immediate personal gain, while mostly ignoring the needs of the faithful, just as many of today's teachers do, both in and out of the church. Because he cared about them, he took it upon himself to teach them. And whosoever will be first among you shall be the servant of all. For the Son of Man also is not come to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a redemption for many. Mark 10, 44-45 Jesus spent his time on earth serving the needs of others voluntarily. His miracles were for the sake of others. His teachings were to help them. Even his death on the cross was for the sake of people everywhere. It's a behavior that a proud or selfish person would be entirely unable to adopt. Like Jesus, we should never be too proud to serve people who are in need. In addition, the humility of Jesus showed itself in another of his behaviors, his willingness, even eagerness, to spend time with people who were very unpopular. And the Pharisees, seeing it, said to his disciples, Why doth your master eat with publicans and sinners? But Jesus, hearing it, said, They that are in health need not a physician. But they that are ill. Matthew nine eleven to 12 And turning to the woman, he said unto Simon, Dost thou see this woman? I entered into thy house, thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she with tears hath washed my feet, and with her hairs hath wiped them. Wherefore I say to thee, Many sins are forgiven her, because she hath loved much, but to whom less is forgiven, he loveth less. Luke seven forty four and 47 And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was the chief of the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and he could not for the crowd, because he was low of stature. And running before, he climbed up into a sycamore tree, that he might see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus was come to the place, looking up, he saw him, and said to him, Zacchaeus! Make haste and come down, for this day I must abide in thy house. Luke nineteen two to 5 The word publican refers to a person who collected taxes for the Romans, and, in general, they were also believed to be cheating the people by demanding more than they needed to pay the Romans. In all three of these instances, we see people who were looked down on by polite society, but Jesus eagerly pursues them, in the first case because he knows how much they need his help. In the second case, he praises and forgives the woman because of her great love. In the third case, he knows that Zacchaeus only needs a little encouragement in order to repent of his own sins and start making amends. In every case, Jesus has no concern at all for what people will think when they see him associating with these unpopular people. Go, behold, I send you as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. Into whatsoever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. Luke 10, 3-5 One of the things Jesus did to serve his disciples was to teach them how they should serve others. This initial journey of theirs was a practice journey of sorts. In their later travels they would carry money and weapons, but this was for the purpose of teaching them how to treat others, a behavior that doesn't require any of those things. Finally, Jesus sometimes took actions to benefit people that involved deliberately not serving them as much as he could have. For instance, And his disciples came and said to him, Why speakest thou to them in parables? Who answered and said to them, 
Because to you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For the heart of this people is grown gross, and with their ears they have been dull of hearing, and their eyes they have shut, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. Matthew thirteen ten eleven and 15 Jesus spoke in parables and stories when he talked to the people instead of telling them things directly, because some of the people had already turned away from him and were refusing to listen. By telling them a story with a mysterious message, he encouraged them to spend time thinking about it and gradually learning to reflect. If they learned to reflect, some of them might open themselves to the message of God and begin to change their ways. If they just rejected him as before, that was nobody's fault but their own. However, this roundabout way of talking about the truths of God was never meant to serve as an obstacle for the disciples or those who they taught. Jesus told each group of people what would be most likely to help them, so even in withholding help of a certain kind, he still helped them in other ways. So Jesus was compassionate for those who'd had the truth kept from them, and who suffered because of their choices or the choices of others. Because of this, he served people with miracles, teachings, parables, and a sort of eagerness to associate even with those who were most despised. Even his unhelpfulness was helpful. Next time, Jesus' reactions to his critics. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.